Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Minecraft Java video. Today we're going to be taking a look at sodium and I'm going to show you guys the best sodium settings to achieve higher FPS in your game. So for those of you who don't know, sodium is a performance mod and I'll leave a link in the description of where you can download this mod. It is a fabric based mod and it does help you get higher FPS in your game, similar to Optifine. And for those of you who have used sodium or iris shade as before you will have known about sodium and the kind of fps gains you can get with sodium so today i'm going to show you guys the best settings for sodium and how to configure the sodium settings to be able to get much more higher fps so i'm going to first of all show you guys my setup so if i go to options and if i click on mods you guys can see that i have got sodium installed here if i do click into sodium you can see that this is the latest version which is version 0.3.2 build 7. i will leave a link in the description below so you guys can go to that link and download the latest version of sodium for minecraft java edition as you guys can see in the top left here i am running minecraft java edition version 1.17.1 and obviously sodium is compatible with this latest release of minecraft java edition if i click on done if i go into my options if i go into my video settings you can see that these are the default settings that you would expect with sodium so if you installed sodium for the first time and you haven't changed any settings or you are installing sodium for the very first time then chances are that these are the settings that you would see as the default options let me quickly go ahead and disable vsync and increase my max frame rate and as you guys can see now my max frame rate is showing as unlimited and I have got the vSIC option disabled so I'm going to click on apply click on close and go back into the game let's bring our FPS counter back on so as you guys can see I am now getting close to 675 FPS on average there I'm not moving I'm just standing still so you guys can see I'm getting 660 to 670 FPS at the moment now just to show you guys that these are the default options i'm actually going to go and delete my options file and i'll quickly show you guys how to restore minecraft game options and this will in turn also restore sodium's game options as well so let's quit out of the game and let's close this down if you go into your browser chances are that you'll probably have the play screen open so if you go into installations over here and just hover over any one of these lines over here as you guys can see and click on the folder icon this should bring up your minecraft directory all right so as you guys can see i do have a file here that says options.txt so i'm going to click on this file i'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard so i'm going to delete that options file we're just going to make sure that i am running the default options for minecraft so if you guys have messed up any of your settings, then you can go ahead and delete that. Now, if you go into the config section over here, so go into the config folder, as I'm showing you right now, if you scroll down, you will see there's two files here that have sodium in the prefix. So look for the sodium mixins.properties file and the sodium options.json file as well. So just highlight both of these files and delete those as well. Now we can close down this folder. We can go back into our fabric loader for 1.17.1 and let's wait for the game to now load up all right so as you guys can see the game is now loaded up and if we go into the options section click on video settings you can see that these are now the default options as you guys can see vsync has been enabled and it is showing 120 for the max frame rate and if we go to quality we can see that these are all of the default options that sodium comes with when you install it for the first time so let's go back into our single player game obviously vsync is enabled so let me go ahead and disable vsync first of all and uh, let's change the max frame rate to unlimited now let's have a look at our base frame rate so as you guys can see i'm now getting 580 590 close to 600 fps in my game if you do have any of the villagers or any of the mobs in front of you that figure will be lower okay so let's go back into our options the very first option that i would recommend changing is the render distance if we hover over this bit here where it says render distance and if you just hover over the slider here you can see that it does say performance impact as a thumb rule just hover over all of these settings and wherever it says performance impact high or medium then you want to make sure that those settings are the settings that you are turning down to give you more fps so as you guys can see by default the game sets the render chunk distance to 12 so i would highly recommend that you tone this down i normally play on 8 but if you 
you guys are suffering, I would recommend that you actually tone this down even more. If you're still not getting higher FPS, then tone it all the way down to two and then move your way up the slider and see how that performs. So on average, I would say just put it to six and see how you get on with that. For the brightness, we can leave that as it is for the GUI scale. Obviously, that is down to personal preference. That won't actually have any impact on your performance, but I'll have to leave that on the auto configuration. For the full screen, I am actually showing you the windowed mode, but I will touch base on that later on. Obviously, do make sure that VSync has been disabled and the max frame rate slider has been set to the max. So it is showing you the unlimited section here. For the view bobbing as well, we can actually go ahead and enable that. It would not really affect your performance, so to speak. Okay, let's go into the quality section. Now, we are going to be making quite a few changes in the quality section. So to begin with, for the graphics, I am going to change this to fast so as you guys can see it does say performance impact it is a high performance impact now for the clouds i would highly recommend that you turn them off obviously if you guys are getting higher fps already then you can leave it as on or fast but i like to turn the clouds off for the weather quality again turn that to fast particle quality the lowest we can go to is actually minimal and as you guys can see it does say performance impact medium so this does have a medium performance impact smooth lighting performance impact is low but again i'd like to turn that off as well if we go into the biome blend again performance impact is low but we can go ahead and turn that down all the way to zero now the next thing is quite important i have noticed a significant fps difference with this option so where it says entity distance if we turn this down to 50 percent we can notice a much higher fps gain by default this would be set to 100 but i would recommend you try and set it to 50 percent for the entity shadows performance impact is low but i do like to disable that same for vignette as well i do like to disable that as well it's very unlikely that this would actually make a difference for your fps but you can actually go ahead and play around with that and see if it does or not for the mip map levels again this does have a medium performance impact so we're going to take the slider and move it all the way down to zero okay so as you guys can see these are the settings which i like to keep in my quality section and as you guys saw earlier i was getting 600 fps on average so hopefully by turning all of these down alongside the render distance that should give me a fps boost now, if I go into the advanced section, there's not much here to change. I would recommend that you leave all of these options ticked as they are. But those of you who are running older graphics drivers, you can go ahead and switch this to swap. So as you guys can see, it does say performance impact high, and it's got the two options there. It's got the async, and it's got the swap option there. And it does say fallback option for older graphics drivers may increase memory usage significantly. So for those of you with older graphics drivers, you can go ahead and play around with that setting. I just like to leave it as async because I have not actually had any problems with that setting. For the rest of these settings, you can obviously go ahead and read up about them, but they do help with giving you much higher FPS. So I do like to leave these settings on. Again, for max pre-rendered frames, this is on the default option, which is three. You can go ahead and play around with these settings so you can actually increase the max pre-rendered frames as well or decrease it, but just make sure that you read up about the description here so you can see that it says very low or high values may create frame rate instability so just keep that in mind personally i just like to leave that on three as the default allow direct memory access again i like to leave that ticked and the enable memory tracing it does say this is a debugging feature so leave that unticked as well in the advanced section we're not going to be making much changes to any of these options but as i said earlier you guys can go ahead and play around with the chunk memory allocator and the max pre-rendered frames and see if that gives you any improvements or any drawbacks in your gameplay but for the majority of the changes we are going to do them in the quality section and the general section of our video options okay i'm going to hit apply now and then i'm going to hit close and go back into the game menu and let's hit close and click on done Let's go back. Let's bring up our FPS counter. And as you guys can see, I'm now touching close to a thousand FPS. I was getting 600 FPS before, but now my FPS has gone up. Obviously, I am seeing some movement on my screen there. I am seeing some animals and villages as well. So that is bringing it down.
If you found this video useful, please do give us a like. If you have any comments or queries about using Sodium or how to download and install Sodium, or if you have any queries about the best options to use with Sodium and what are the best Sodium settings for Minecraft Java Edition version 1.17.1, then do leave them in the comment section below. If you do have any problems with Sodium, or if sodium is not working correctly for you, again, do leave them in the comment section below. And also, please do subscribe to this channel to help support it, help it grow. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.